I just filmed an intro and my microphone was plugged in, but for some reason it didn't pick it up and I am so bad at doing intros and I am so awkward, okay. Welcome back to my channel. If you want to make some vegan pizza buns with me or pizza rolls, however you want to call them, uh, we're gonna do that today. If you try making this recipe, please let me know in the comments. Um, I did use somebody else's recipe for the pizza dough. It is from Sally's Baking Addiction. She's got a homemade pizza dough recipe for beginners that is fabulous. I use it every time I make homemade pizza and um, I definitely recommend trying it out. And then I'll show you how to make some sauce and we're gonna try rolling them up. Hopefully they turn out. Never done this before, but I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too and hit the like button if you want to see more content like this or let me know too in the comments or on my Instagram what sort of things you'd like to see this year. So let's get started. So to start, I want to make the dough because it is going to have to rise for a little while. So I'll just get this out of the way. That's going to be because I'm going to cut up some onion and garlic to make the sauce. So again, I've never made pizza rolls before, but yeah, a lot of a lot of recipes that I was looking at used um, like frozen pizza dough or like the Pillsbury rolls of pizza dough, and I don't have those. The Pillsbury ones actually are accidentally vegan, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, so you could use that, but I'm just gonna make some from scratch, and I'm going to start by mixing some yeast, instant yeast, with warm water, and I just got this from the sink. I'm actually going to warm it up a little bit more because it took me a long time to try and figure out how to start this video and to get comfortable talking in front of the camera again. So I'm just going to redo this. And I don't have a thermometer um, to check the temperature. Before I add in my yeast, actually, I'm just going to add in the sugar to my water. Give that a quick whisk. That should be fine. And I'm just going to add a packet of instant yeast. I think they all come in a pretty standard amount. This one's eight grams. Always works for me in this recipe. And I'll give it a little stir, but I don't wanna get any of these kind of sticking out of the top. That's what I always worry about, or stuck on the whisk. Okay, I'm just gonna let that sit and start to activate and we'll see if it works out. Sometimes the yeast in the package might be dead and you might have to try it uh, try it again. I think it should be okay. Some of them are already starting to look a little bit foamy, so that's what we're going for. While that sits um, for a few minutes, I'm just going to add the salt to my flour and give that a bit of a mix so that it's combined. And the only other ingredient in this dough is olive oil, and that's just to give it a little bit of flavor and a nice soft inside texture. So now I'm just going to put that off to the side as well. And I'm just going to start on my pizza sauce. So for this, I found a recipe for homemade pizza sauce quite a while ago, but I don't remember who it was by. And I don't think I follow it exactly anymore anyways, because I figured out sort of the way I like to do it. But basically I'm just going to use maybe half an onion, I'll see how much that gives me and then I might use a little bit more. But I just basically want my onion to be diced into pretty small pieces. Oh, I'm so sensitive to the onion fumes. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil into a pot that I have just on the stove or saucepan or whatever it is. And I'm gonna turn this on to a medium. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to let the olive oil heat up just a little bit before I add in my onions. I'm also going to chop up some garlic, so I'm going to do that now. For the garlic, uh, it's not super important the size. Honestly, for the onions, it's not that much either. I just want them pretty small so that they can give a lot of flavor because this sauce is going to be simmering for about an hour and a half until it gets nice and thick. But then we're gonna blend it everything together so it's not crazy important for them to be like tiny pieces. It's not uh, so much of a textural element with this. Okay, I'm happy with that. So then I just added my onion and garlic into my saute pan with the olive oil and gave that all a mix. After a few minutes, I added some Italian seasoning 
a pinch of red pepper flakes, and one large can of diced tomatoes. Then I gave it all one last stir and turned the heat down to low. Okay, so now I'm basically gonna just let that simmer for an hour and a half and stir it every once in a while. I'm going to get rid of this. And our yeast has gotten nice and foamy, so I'm ready to add that to my flour to start making the dough. I'm going to add in all of that and then a couple of tablespoons of olive oil as well. So I'm gonna start with the olive oil. I think it's two tablespoons. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And I'm going to add in my yeast and water. I always see on recipes, they're always saying like, hopefully your yeast isn't dead, like don't use too hot or too cold of water for it to sort of foam properly and work properly, which I'm sure I know is true. I learned about it in one of my classes this semester. But it's just funny, like I've never had a thermometer. I didn't buy one because I didn't think I would really need it since I'm not cooking any meat, obviously. And I cook things very carefully and thoroughly. But I've never had an issue with my yeast rising and I've never measured the water temperature. Like I always just use my finger and I've heard a few vlogs sort of call it um, like bath temperature, I kind of go what's a little bit over my body temperature. So if it feels a little bit warm, then I know that it's a little bit above my internal body temperature. And I think, I think the like prime temperature for yeast is around 40 degrees Celsius and our body temperature is around 37. So that's just what I go based off of. There's one thing that I do have a problem with with doughs is I don't measure my flour because I don't have a scale. Um, and I find the texture of my dough is often not quite right. Like it's either too dry or too moist. Too dry is a lot worse because then you can't really add moisture back to dough that easily. And I find then I get like, I might over knead something and it gets uh, really tough. And again, I also don't want to over knead it, but I think that feels pretty good. It's a little bit on the sticky side, but it usually is when I make this recipe. So I'm just sort of going to shape it into a good ball, sort of close the bottom. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil into the bowl and on the dough so that it doesn't get sticky. That feels good to me. So I'm gonna just rinse off my hands and I'm also gonna dampen that cloth that's in the back there and then put that over here so that it can rise for the next probably hour so that it can double. I'm just gonna cover this and um, my heater blows hot air from underneath the cupboards. So I'm just gonna put this down here. And that's a pretty nice and warm spot, especially when it's winter time like it is right now. This is looking good. The moisture is coming out of the tomatoes. It kind of looks a little bit more wet than it was at the beginning when I first put the tomatoes in, which is good. And then over the next, probably another hour, it's going to really cook down and then it'll be ready to be blended. But for now, it's just gonna be a bit of a waiting game. So I'll see you guys back when it's ready to get rolling. Okay, honestly, like, thank goodness for this camera's um, white balance correction because it is so yellow in here right now, but I think it doesn't look too bad on there. Um, hopefully, if it is still a little bit yellow, I can edit it out later. Um, but I just checked on the dough and it has risen a lot. Um, that's why I'm saying like this, this dough recipe is so easy and it works every single time. So I am going to just punch this down and get some of the air out of it. It's nice and sticky still, but it's not sticking to my fingers the way it was before. Perfect. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm not gonna make 
all of this into pizza rolls because I did find actually that Sally's Baking Addiction has a pizza roll uh, recipe on the web their website. So I actually got to find out that this this dough batch makes two or around 24 pizza rolls, so two sets of 12, but I only need about half of that. I'm just gonna do 12 of them today. So uh, what I'm going to do is turn this off because the sauce is pretty much done. And you can actually see that the sauce has thickened up nicely. I don't know if you can tell that much from before, but uh, it's nice and thick now. It smells really good. The whole house honestly smells super good now. So I'm gonna put this uh, just off to the side here because I want it to cool a little bit before I blend it. So I have some vegan cheese, uh, the Earth Island brand. This is my favorite for making vegan pizza with. Um, so I think it's gonna work well in the pizza rolls because it melts really nicely. And then I'm also just gonna use some of these Eve's uh, veggie cuisine, veggie ham slices and cut them up into pieces to make like pepperoni. It's not really that ham like to me but it does remind me of like salami or pepperoni so I'm just gonna go put this around second and I'm not sure how many slices I'm going to need start with five maybe and just see I'm just gonna try cutting them into like slices I guess or not slices but little like pieces I kind of want them to be like little pepperoni bites almost like if you had like a pizza pop or something like that. I think I might do just a few more, maybe three more. Okay, hopefully that's not too much, but I can always leave some out. Okay, so I just switched the angle up a little bit because I thought it would be a little bit easier to see the surface here um, and see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread out a little bit of flour. Oh, I'm also going to preheat the oven going to take my dough out and what I want to do is just cut it in half. So I have this and I'm just going to make sure it's about even. I think that's pretty good. Maybe I'll use the slightly bigger one just so that I have a little bit more ease of working with it just because this is going to be made into a pizza at some other time probably with the same sauce. So it'll be easier to just roll out a thinner crust pizza. And I'm gonna roll this out into a rectangle. Flour that a little bit. And then just give this a go. Okay, so I think this is just about good. What I still need to do is just blend my sauce. And I don't think it really matters if I splash a bit of sauce onto here since there's going to be sauce going on there anyway. Now, in Sally's uh, Baking Addiction, on the, on the Sally's Baking Addiction website, they recommend putting some indents with your fingers into the dough and then also putting a little bit of olive oil. It also recommends chilling the dough once it has the contents in it for 25 minutes, but I'm not gonna do that. I just don't feel like it. I'm just gonna put a little drizzle of olive oil and spread it around my fingers. So she recommends using about a third of a cup of sauce. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I like my stuff saucy, so I'm never like upset if there's a little bit too much. And again, I've never made pizza rolls before or cinnamon buns or anything like of this type of, I guess, treat or snack or whatever you want to call it. So I don't know how much filling is too much or like how close to the edges I'm supposed to go. I'm just gonna guess that you want to have a little bit of extra room at the ends so that stuff doesn't come like spilling out of it. On the website, it says to put the cheese and then the pepperoni, but of course they're not using vegan products. So because of how the cheese and the pepperoni works, I'm gonna do my pepperoni first, or not pepperoni, but my veggie ham. I just think that's gonna stick better and work a bit better. And I'm going to add on my vegan cheese. Sometimes with vegan cheese, for some reason, less is more. So this doesn't seem like 
I'm holding back that much, but I'm not gonna put any more than that. I might sprinkle a little bit extra on top, but vegan cheese gets kind of weird the way that it melts. Um, this stuff does melt the best that I've seen, but just to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna leave it at that, just so it's not like super sticky or like uh, sometimes it can be a little bit greasy. So I'm going to roll it up. I don't know if there's any sort of rhyme or reason to how this is supposed to be done. I'm just gonna pinch the ends a little bit so that stuff isn't falling out of the sides. Give the bottom a little bit of a roll back. So the sauce, yeah, you can see the sauce is sort of coming out. So I'm just gonna pinch the sides here and then sort of pinch this down as well so that it's not getting like super leaky. Okay, I'm not gonna touch it anymore because I don't want it to fall apart on me here. I think it's doing okay, but I think it definitely would have been better to cool down my sauce a little bit more. Also grab my baking tray. I'm just gonna dust the pan with a little bit of cornmeal. Good. And I'm going to use a serrated knife. I'm going to start on this side and just cut through. And I'm just going to press it down a little bit. Do it like that. The last one. I'm just going to put these in the oven. They should take about 15 to 20 minutes at 400 degrees. I'll check back at 15 and show you guys what it's looking like. So I've had the pizza rolls in for 20 minutes and uh, they look good. They could just be a little bit more brown on the top. So I just put broil on um, and I set a timer for a minute. I just really don't want them to burn. I just want the tops to get a little bit more brown, but they look really good. They're smelling good. They look really good. So the cheese leaked a little bit on a couple of them and I maybe could have pressed them in a little bit tighter or let them now that I'm looking at them, I feel like maybe I could have let them do a second rise once they were like laid out on the baking tray, but they look really good. They're way too hot right now, but I cannot wait to try these. 